Thanks for joining us, the Wealthy Retailer Podcast with your host, Dan Holman. Every episode, Dan dives into the retail headlines that matter to you, the independent retailer, covering topics ranging from retailer inventory, technology, marketing, retailers' questions, and more. The Wealthy Retailer Podcast is brought to you by Canadian Retail Solutions. Learn more at retailbycrs.com. And now, here's Dan Holman. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Wealthy Retailer Podcast. Glad to have you with us again today. Um, lots of good stuff. We've got our front man, Rob Lollisher from Road 55 Marketing, the podcast guru himself, going to lead the way here this morning, Rob. <laughs> I wouldn't throw out that guru uh, too, too <laughs> much, but uh, yeah, happy, happy mid-September, Dan. Aren't it's, those all your podcast guests on the wall behind you? Isn't that what that is? That's, uh, I, I kind of, I, I went to the uh, um, school of crooked decorating and I, I plastered all these pictures on my you, wall. Is it meant and, to be sideways? <laughs> saying, yeah, it's, it's just the camera, Dan, the way I've done it. And, <laughs> but I, I have, uh, I firmly decided that I'm not good at straight lines, so I'm going to go with kind of the FBI manhunt wall i figure and <laughs> just start pasting everything and have some strings attached and nice. it'll be awesome nice. take all that pressure off of being uh being love crooked. the creativity rob <laughs> love the creativity uh dan we got some headlines as always this week yeah. and, and looking forward to hearing some of your thoughts we uh you're a bit of a storyteller my friend and uh mm. our first story is talking about you know that power of immersive storytelling and and looking forward to that uh, really cool one. The, this interesting, uh, it's a campaign built around being the antidote of that fast purchase culture of Black Friday and really aimed at supporting the independents. And uh, story broken last week, uh, Amazon in Canada talking about, you know, new hires, 15,000 workers at, at what I would say is pretty significant pay, yep. pay jump. And, and so see what, uh, what might come of that. And then uh, towards the end, a little bit about uh, a bit of the new version of the Q&A and, and uh, sharing some thoughts there. So uh, you ready to go there, sir? Rock on. Let's do it. Okay. Gather around the campfire, friends. We're going to talk about the storytelling, the power of immersive <laughs> storytelling. The story coming from allbusiness.com. What did you like here, Dan? Well, uh, as maybe you mentioned, uh, I'm a bit of a storyteller and I believe that storytelling is a critical component to, you know, any engaging relationship and especially in any sales environment. The people that are the most successful in sales environments are the best storytellers. It is the I feel felt found that that catapults this story. And in all business, it was allbusiness.com, I think, allbusiness.com, yeah. They really shared these three or four components of, of what storytelling or story doing is doing in the retail world. And as the, as the you know, oh gosh, I'm, I'm going to be so glad when we can stop talking about the goddamn pandemic. But as the pandemic you, propelled man. forward, yeah. you know, it's, it's created this need for us to tell better stories. And retailers today have to do a better job of telling the story of where, why, and how. Probably, you know, I mixed up the order there. It should always be where. <laughs> yeah. I'm pardon me. It should always be why, where, and how, or why, what, where, and how. Um, and we start with telling a story about why and in incorporating storytelling in everything we do is paramount. And we see that, Rob. This is not something new. This this dates back to the beginning of of mass media, we started by telling a story. Telling a story allows you to take someone from where they are right now to where they wanna be, perhaps where they see themselves or, or where we together see themselves. This is about vision. And telling a story about why you select the products you do, why uh, we choose what we do, why, um, you know, why we decide to take a stand on something. It comes from telling a story. And I'm, I'm going to share this. You know, every single retailer listening that has ever had the opportunity, good, bad, or indifferent to chat with me knows that I always pause and say, hang on, I want to tell you a little story. I want to tell you something. I want to share this story with you that helps yeah. us get from point A to point B. Well, in our retail life, we've got to be able to tell these stories. And we use stories to communicate as a retailer, you know, why we are special 
what sets us apart, what makes us different from what's out there. Stories allow us to invite customers into our life. And as we tell a story socially, we're really pulling that, that viewer, listener, reader, surfer closer to us. And this, this article in All Business shares some pretty good stats. You know, there's a 44% there's a jump in consumers supporting their local economy because of the story the local business person is telling. Totally. Yeah. Love it. And so we've got to continue down this path. So, you know, take an opportunity to read this article and, and maybe start to transform your store into this perhaps immersive storytelling experience. Experiential retail, experience-driven retail is about a story. And some of us are better than others at telling it. Yeah. I think of a couple of things quick, Dan, that, that uh, the storytelling to me equates to so much of that just that unpolished behind the scenes. And I know people get a, a little worked up about, I, I just want to show the pretty polished version right. of my life, of my store, of my goods. But, but man, that, you know, revealing the true self and, and, and to your point, like the, the behind the scenes story. And, and I think of art too, like, like think of the value of art people and how provenance the story of how that piece came yeah. to be lends itself to so much to the value of, of what it is. And, and I really see that equating in this, in this scenario. It does. Absolutely. I completely agree with you. And, you know, Rob, storytelling allows us to elevate from where we are to where we're going or where we want to be and, and sharing that. Now, listen, here we're talking about the external storytelling, but internal storytelling is just as important sharing good story with your with your team you know your internal customer is just as or maybe even more yep. important than the external storytelling yep. i mean all of this front facing storytelling and 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 the examples that we're seeing out there are all about the acquisition of market share but truthfully good storytelling starts at home right it starts with your team and your ability to inspire them with good storytelling i love that yeah, they, they may have just joined your team a couple months ago and they see you as, oh, overnight success. And well, let me tell you the story of, <laughs> of how this how this started. And, yeah, and the zigzag. The that, totally. Two right steps on. forward, eight steps back, one step forward. I mean, that's just that's <laughs> the entrepreneurial path. Well, here's the, uh, uh, speaking of story, the power of it uh, towards independence. Uh, love this one. It comes from PRNewsBlog.com. Uh, it, it's uh, they're jumping ahead, getting a good jump on it. It's called Just a Card Indie Week coming in November with, uh, as I said, that antidote to that fast purchase culture of Black Friday. And, right. and they're really encouraging everyone to celebrate their own businesses, uh, not just their own, the ones they love, too. So what did you like on this one, Dan? Well, this I don't know if you've heard this before, but Just a Card started. I think this is the fifth anniversary of, of, of Start a Card. Um, or cool. pardon me, just a card. Um, and it is the week leading to Black Friday. And it was the the introduction or the preceding note or message to Black Friday. And it was the indie retailers that have gathered together to say, hey, this is how we're going to fight against you know, those big market stores or the corporate stores. We're going to allow indie to stand up for themselves. And this this saw... Uh, if I remember the number correctly, Rob, it was about 55,000 stores taking part yeah. um, in this, you know, uh, just a card that highly promotes Indie Week, Indie Retail Week. And I think it was 17,000 plus stores displayed the just a card campaign window stickers, 105,000 engaged with the just a card community on social media. And this, this campaign, um, you know, now has garnered, uh, let's jump across the pond, the British Independent Retailers Association to join this effort to support independent retail. And we've had the shop local and we've had the small business Saturday. And this is really the expansion of that. We see pink Friday or pink Saturday, you know, we're seeing these, these indie days growing and this week long event that is the highlight of uh, art and business 
um, and service, whether it's just a book or just a gift or just a card uh, that, that is, is somewhat moving um, to see and, and know that this November, we're going to see more of that. And I, we expect to see, you know, upwards of 25,000 businesses jumping on the just a card bandwagon, which is a good thing. That's where we need to be. We need to be promoting not just ourselves, but the indie community. And that whether you're a cupcake shop or a dress shop or, you know, a home goods store, we, we need to be rising together. And we've talked about this before, you know, there's nothing more powerful than community over competition. Let's band our community together to be stronger. Yep. And, you know, a couple of months out, it's it, a good opportunity for someone to take, you know, the, the theme of this and, hey, you know, find a way to, you know, hitch your wagon to it, but but make it your own too. Like, right. and, and back to our first story of that, finding that way to, to tell your story. Well, yep. they, they just gave you a good good theme week, if you will, to, uh, to do just that. So yeah, yep. great, great little story. This podcast is brought to you by Canadian Retail Solutions. We've been empowering retailers across North America for 30 years with the latest in point of sale technology, best in class support, merchandise intelligence with open to buy planning, and much more. CRS has the retail solution to help take your retail business to the next level of success. Visit retailbycrs.com to learn more. Remember, Canadian Retail Solutions exists to help make you, the independent retailer, better. Okay, sir. The big A. The big A. <laughs> Those guys, they announced this week that uh, plans to hire 15,000 more frontline workers uh, uh, with a significant pay boost up to 21.65 an hour. What, uh, what stood out here, Dan? Really, it has nothing to do with Amazon. Um, but let's just take this moment um, to be in a mastermind environment, in a performance group, sitting across okay. the round table from Amazon and the leadership there. And let's figure out is what they're doing actually a best practice. Well, we've talked about this lots in the past. You get what you pay for. And I'm not someone that is going to um, misconstrue the label frontline worker um, in, in retail. I think that we have clouded that label um, you know, a frontline healthcare worker is very different than a frontline grocery clerk, you know, and let's not allow that. Let's not, let's not allow ourselves to, to, to really deflate what a frontline worker is. And so while they used frontline worker as one of the catalysts to paying a little bit more money here, let's, let's be fair to each other. You know, there is no such thing as a frontline worker in retail you know, we, we degrade or devalue that term when we take it away from the healthcare community, whether that's, you know, first responders um, or, you know, the frontline yeah. team that, yeah. that, that are in our medical facilities. So Amazon, what they've done is come out and said, hey, we're going to give people, we're going to pay more money. Well, start peeling back some layers here. We are in a very, very worker competitive market. And we recognize always you get what you pay for. And if you want to pay minimum wage, expect minimum output. Yeah. If you want to attract someone to come and share your story, maybe we've got to pay them a little bit more. And this is the attractant that, that Amazon is using. They're going to pay people a little bit more money. And it ranges between a buck 60 and 220 an hour, I think, more. And I had this conversation with Kay um, in Virginia yesterday or the day before, yep. um, you know, about paying people minimum wage. And, you know, are you going to pay people minimum wage and expect minimum output? Or are you going to pay the minimum wage and expect maximum output? And in a market where we are just dying for workers, there is a worker shortage. We've got to find a way to pay people more now. What you're going to find with Amazon, if we all follow this lead, what happens when they're paying people more? Are they making less profit, do you think? Most definitely not. No. Their intention is never, let's, let's pay our people more so we can no. make less. They're going to increase pricing. They're going to take advantage of inflationary pricing. They're going to sell 
a little bit higher price point so they can afford to pay their people a little bit more, which for us is a great catalyst. We want to see, and we talked about this a couple of months ago, we want to see prices start increasing. We want to see not just our margins get a little taller, but what we're selling for. You know, we often confuse margin percentage or talk about margin percentage rather than margin dollar. If I can sell a little bit more expensive item, I put more margin dollars in the bank. Percentage is not cashable. And, you know, Amazon is taking this leap of faith saying we're going to pay people more money. What they're not saying is we're going to increase prices. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this out. If they're going to start paying more, pay, paying more money, that means that prices have to go up. Listen, we know this. We know this. The cost of supply is increasing exponentially. It is in some cases four or five times more dollars to get something from port to store than it has been, you know, than it was a year ago. Yeah. And so those costs are impacting everyone in the retail chain, not just the big guy, but the little guy, not just the little guy, but also the big guy. And paying people more money comes on the back of us increasing our prices and knowing that we're in a competitive place. And the only thing that we have today to attract someone is how much we're going to pay them. Once we have them in our door, then we tell them a story. Okay, let's backtrack. Yeah, now we get totally. to tell them a story about why that, that you know, romantically connects them to our mission in life. But the carrot is that we're going to pay you more yeah. money. You're going to um, work smarter here, not harder. And this is going to be a catalyst to you making a better life, not a better living. Right? And that's what we're seeing with totally. Amazon. And, and you know, yeah. We don't often talk about anything positive with the big, I almost said asshole, but big A. <laughs> we don't often talk about anything positive, but this is actually a positive move for us. Yeah. And, and on that point of the, you know, you can start with paying more or, or back to that storytelling, as you said, make that part of the, this, this is the uh, reason you want to work here. You don't have that. And I, you know, to pick on the big A for a moment, I would say, their story is not quite as inspiring and and purpose driven as what I believe an independent retailer could right. build that narrative of, and and but if you don't have that narrative, then yeah, it just falls on well twenty one sixty five. You got to pay me more. And but, you know uh, this, Rob, that if they have to go out and hire fifteen thousand more people, they've got to pull them from another job yeah. or off their coach, and the only way to do it is to incentivize them and that comes with paying them more, right? That's the reality. We're in a competitive marketplace. And let's go back, uh, what, 14 years ago in Alberta? You know, if you, if you were a retailer and you opened your front door, money fell into it. I mean, that's how easy it was to do business in Alberta in 2006 and seven. And what we saw was this massive labor shortage that saw us paying our... Uh, coffee shop employees, 20 bucks an hour. You know, they went from making 965 or 865 an hour. They doubled their wage overnight because of the demand yep. for workers and the supply, right? The supply was smaller. The workforce shrunk a little yep. bit. There wasn't enough people to satisfy the boom that was happening yep. in Alberta. And so the only way we got people was to pay them more money. Well, that is in fact the same place we're in today. Perhaps not with the economic boom that we had then, but with the labor shortage we're seeing today, people are more reluctant, reluctant to move, reluctant to uh, like move jobs, change jobs, yeah. reluctant to leave the house. You know, they're making a decent, you know, paycheck for not doing anything. So I'm going to have to throw a bigger carrot out there to get them. And I believe that this is going to be a positive yeah. thing for retail, not a negative. Yeah. And, and I like what you said before, too, about uh, the storytelling being towards your internal team, too, and, and right. just the importance of that. Uh, and then never too late to start, start, you know, conversing on that front. So interesting story. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. Well, speaking of retailers and questions, we've had a ton of them. Uh, we, we got more coming up. Tell us a bit what, what's happening there. Well, we're going to see a shift here on the Wealthy Retailer podcast. Um, one of the, not one of, some of the greatest 
the best feedback we get is from retailer questions and, and special guests. And we've had some really outstanding guests um, on the podcast previous to, you know, what we've done for the last year or so. We really started this podcast with the intention to talk to retailers, to hear yeah. from the retailer what they were doing and how the, the pending headline of the week was impacting their business. Um, and so, you know, we're going to make a bit of a trade here, Rob. Um, we've cut a deal with our, with our retail audience. We're trading up <laughs> our front man. We're trading up Rob Lawlisher here. Uh, Hang on, does it, have you told my agent this? <laughs> does he know I've been traded? <laughs> We're bringing retailers to the podcast. Yeah. So uh, starting, I think it's the first week of October, you're going to hear from retailers, retail experts, brand ambassadors, service providers. We're, we're going to open the podcast up to that audience so that we can hear awesome. from, you know, the store owner, the person yeah. that's that's in the grind every day with you and sharing their perhaps why and how um, and and maybe in a bit of a interactive interview kind of format. Um, and I think that that that's what the audience wants. And here we are, yeah. you know, we're catering to our retail audience, our world, Rob, we cater to the retailer, the retailer caters to the consumer and listening to the consumer is important. And here we are listening to our audience and saying, hey, I really like your retailer question platform. I want to hear more of that. I want to see more of that. And I think the best way to do that is to is to get those those retailers and retail experts, you know, back in the forefront yeah. on our podcast. And so you can look forward to that. And if if you're that person, if you want to be on, you know, if you want to if you want to throw your name in the hat and share your message, share your your why, share your how send an email to dan at the wealthy retailer.com. Um, and, and let's see, maybe there's an opportunity for you to be on the podcast yeah. and share your message. There is nothing more powerful than peer to peer conversation. Totally. This is a lonely, yeah. lonely world. And having the luxury <laughs> of, of having someone across the city, across the province, across the state, across the country that's living and breathing the same thing I am um, and being able to, to feel the inspiration from them, man, there's nothing that feels better than that. This is not about misery loving company. This is about let's, let's look at what is working. Yeah. Let's take what works for you and share it with that audience that is your retail community. I promise we don't have a ton of consumers chiming in on our podcast. We have a lot of retailers chiming totally. in. Yep. And uh, I really do look forward. I think we've got 10 retailers lined up already. Uh, we've got four or five retail experts from different fields. Um, we've got a, a podcast scheduled with uh, a great Shopify platform that's been catapulting e-commerce business over the last year that uh, really looking forward to have uh, fashion stores, outdoor stores, gift stores booked, have That's some awesome. really yep. strong retail experts scheduled. So uh, super excited. And that, that switch over you're going to see happen in real life the first week of October as we, as we roll forward. Can't wait for it. I think it's going to be awesome, Dan. Everyone's going to really enjoy it. I, I've, I've loved hanging with you in, in the mornings doing, doing this, but uh, I'm going to turn maybe like the Zamboni goalie, eh? That I'll, I'll just be in the corner, and if you happen to wait. need a backup goalie, I'll, or I'm up in the press box. Yeah. But, uh, let's, no. uh, let's, let's not, um, you know, let's not uh, um, trick ourselves into thinking that you don't bring significant value to the no. podcast. And Rob, yeah. you know, as an owner of a, of a, you know, forward thinking content marketing engine, you know, company, you have a perspective that is very valuable to an entrepreneurial audience. And so, you know, your name has to be on the guest list, if yeah. you will. Um, so listeners, if you're a Rob Lawlisher fan and not a Dan <laughs> Holman fan, uh, don't, don't, don't dismay, don't dispart, don't you, abandon you might, the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Rob will be back. Well, I, I've loved, I'm not a retailer first and foremost, but even though I'm not week after week, so many of these stories, while they've been retail driven, and I know even going forward, they're going to be retail driven, but to your point of they're entrepreneurial driven and, yeah. and I can, I can remove the widget from the conversation, whether, whether you're talking about dresses or donuts or, 
and and there's just so much value in it and i love it and and i think that's the value you've created for this audience and and will continue to build on for that so uh yeah looking looking forward to days ahead on on that front um as we say uh, uh every week dan if you haven't yet head to retail by crs.com uh, we've got the weekly newsletter. That's going to continue. We'll make sure that, you know, value is going out right. that way for, for everyone out there. A few other stories we didn't get to uh, uh, this week. You know, I kind of love this. It kind of comes out of that that story and the retail owner and how this uh, owner sold their own company to those who helped build it, you know, their right. staff. And, and I'm sure... Uh, someone will enjoy that one out there. Uh, a lot around business improvement areas. And uh, geez, I had a meeting with a lady yesterday who's involved in that world. And, and they know the pressure that's on their plate. Like the, these folks that there's a big expectation the, of the work that they're going to do going forward and how important it is. And then uh, a good one, five tips uh, uh, from a retail entrepreneur who uh, we, what's better than six figure and seven figure? Well, it's an eight figure business. Eight figures. <laughs> and uh, so lots of good stuff there. Uh, great stuff this week, Dan. Yeah, you too. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate it. Everybody have a great week in retail and uh, we'll look forward to chatting a little bit more next week.